Hey everyone, welcome to GIS Chops. My name's Jeff. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to get the most out of ArcGIS Pro by taking the pain out of pains. Seems like Pro throws up a pain anytime you click something on the ribbon. Those things float, they dock, they stack. I'll be letting you know what I think is the best setup for pains towards the end, so stick around. And if you have a setup that you think is better, let me know in the comments below. Also, I've added a segment called Maps in Movies, so stick around for the end. And as always, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell. Want to ring the bell? All right. Ding, ding. And toss me a like. So let's get chopping. Pains are these tall rectangles on the sides of the application. At the top of each pane, you'll see there are three buttons, a downward triangle, a push pin, and an X. I'm going to recommend that you just ignore that triangle because you can do everything that it offers in a more efficient and easier way. So let's look at what it does offer. Float, dock, auto-hide, and close. And you can see that the state the pane is currently in is grayed out. Well, I can do all of those things without clicking a down arrow. I can float a pane by dragging the top of a pane into the middle of the application. I can dock it the same way, but in reverse. I can auto-hide a pane by clicking the push pin, and I can close a pane by clicking the X. All of these are accomplished without clicking a drop-down. Plus, when I float or dock a pane manually, I have more control over where it ends up. And think of all the time you save by not clicking that drop-down arrow. Occasionally you'll see a fourth button, a question mark. Clicking that opens up the help dock for that pane. It really did open. It's on my other screen. Let me get it over here where you can see it. Let's talk a little more about what happens when you unpin the pane. You can see it slides the pane to the side and leaves a side tab with the pane's name on it. You can expose the pane again by clicking the tab. The pane then slides out again and stays open until you do something else in the application. This opens up a lot of real estate for the view, but I find the extra clicks and mouse movement I have to do to expose the pane isn't worth the extra space. And sometimes it takes a while for the pane to pop back out, so I like to keep the panes pinned to the sides. Now you may have noticed that when I demonstrated closing a pane that my contents pane is no longer available. What if I need to turn off a layer? You can open the contents pane again by going to the View tab and clicking on Contents. In this project I have opened up every pane I could find, and I left them where they open by default. You can see down here that when you have multiple panes open they stack on top of each other, with each pane getting a tab along the bottom. I have so many panes open on the right side that you can only see the first letter of each tab. So my kids would say I have tabs on tabs on tabs on tabs. If you hover over the tab, there's a tip that shows up telling us which pane it is. You can make the pane wider, but that takes up space from the view area, and I like to keep the panes as narrow as I can. You can reorder the tabs by dragging them back and forth. Let's say you don't want one of these panes included in the stack. You want it all by itself. You can do that by dragging his tab off of the pane. This makes it a floating pane. I like to have my attributes pane floating on the second screen. This allows me to enter or edit attributes on a feature I've just created or for a selected feature without having to activate it in the stack. You may have noticed some funky rectangles that popped up when I've been moving a pane around. These are called docking targets. If you hover your pane over one of these targets, it shows you where the pane will be placed with a blue semi-transparent rectangle. Hovering the pane over the view shows four targets in the center of the view and four targets around the edges. These targets will place the pane around the edges of the view depending on which target you end up choosing. Let's drop the pane on the left target in the center of the view. I don't know why you would want to dock a pane on the bottom or the top of the view. It wastes a lot of space that the view could be using. If I drag a pane over a docked pane, another set of docking targets appear that allows me to control how I want the new pane docked. You'll see there are five targets in the center. If we hover over each target, the blue rectangle shows us where it will go. 
If you drop the paint on the center target, the floating paint will be added to the stack, and a tab for the new paint will be added at the bottom. Drop the floating paint on the side targets, and you get another paint docked adjacently. If you drop it on the top or bottom targets, the two paints are split and stacked vertically. I find docking some paints stacked vertically helpful, especially if the paint's information or tools only take up half the space. Some paints have multiple tabs that do different things, so click around and explore what each tab has to offer. Some even have sub-tabs. I think Pro goes a little crazy with tabs. I found a bit of a gotcha when dealing with certain paints. Let's look at the Symbology paint. You see this bar with the three dots? It moves up and down. Somehow I had drugged this bar all the way to the top of the paint, hiding the Symbology properties. I think I was going through a tutorial or something and didn't have the same options to change my Symbology that the tutorial had. I think I even called tech support and had one of those facepalm moments. So be on the lookout for that three dot bar and make sure it's not at the top of your pane. If it is, your pane is hiding something. The attributes pane also has one of these bars, but it doesn't have the three dots, so watch out for that one too. Many of the panes have a hamburger button. I think they're actually called menu buttons, but I heard somebody call them a hamburger button, and I like that term much better, so I'm going to go with that. Click the hamburger and you get options for that pane, like sort order or search options, stuff like that. The symbology pane is quite complex, and I'm going to be covering that in a series of videos in the near future. The way I usually have my panes displayed is with the contents pane pinned to the left side and the catalog pane pinned to the right. I then stack the labeling pane, the symbology pane, and the geoprocessing pane with the catalog pane. If I'm in an editing project, I will also stack the create features and the modify features panes on the right, with the attributes pane floating on my second screen. As I said before, if you have an ideal pane setup, let me know below in the comments. For this video, I picked one of the funniest map lines that I've ever seen in a movie. Jumanji The Next Level from Columbia Pictures. In this reboot sequel, is that a thing, reboot sequel? Anyway, instead of a board game coming to life, people are transported into a video game and play as characters with a specific set of skills. Very particular set of skills. No, not those skills. But one of the characters in the game played by Jack Black and played by different characters in the movie Man, this is getting confusing. Let's just say he's able to read maps in the game. Okay, they're headed north. Which way is north? I have no idea. Well, you want to check the map? Right. I'm a map guy now. Find an oasis and follow the flame to the desert fruit. Follow the flame to the desert fruit. You know there's nothing on that. He can see it, you can't. Each place on the map is a different level of the game, and the levels get harder as we go. This one is called... Dunes. The person playing with this character at this point is a college football player and is none too thrilled to have the job of reading maps. In fact, this is the set of skills and weaknesses his character has. You gotta be kidding me. Well, geometry is... it's new. Yeah! Who wouldn't want to be better at geometry? And for weaknesses, endurance. And what else? Let's see. Heat, sun, and sand. Shouldn't be a problem. So this clip wins the award for best map line in a movie. Here's the clip. Uh, uh, uh. Oh no, no, no! Oh my god, that was awful. I hate being the map guy! My wife and I laughed so hard at this clip, I'm sure everyone in the theater thought, what is wrong with those two? Well, that wraps it up for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and tell your friends and colleagues. And if you know a movie that has a funny map clip, let me know in the comments below and I'll give you a shout out in a future video.